How about this new documentary on the Wildcats? The Troubled Life of One-Time Star Tiny Pinder. How come sports stars always get called troubled? Without Tiny, I don't think the Wildcats would have won championships in those early days. Here comes Tiny Pinder, say goodbye. Oh, he was loud, he was out there, he was just a beast. The documentary looks at the rise of the Wildcats and Pinder's role. Now, when you think of Wildcats, you probably think Red Army. You think a sold-out RAC arena, the jungle. You think final series after final series, and you think championship trophies. But it was a pretty inauspicious start. In 1982, they were called the West State Wildcats, and they played out of the 800-seat Perry Lake Stadium. I remember that. Pleased to say that I don't, because I was too young. About the only thing they were good at back in those days was losing. In 1984, they were renamed the Perth Wildcats, still owned and run by the WA government. And in 1986, that government executed one of the great sucker punches of all time when they invited local businessman Bob Williams to a game in the hope that he'd sponsor the team. He does, and the ink's barely dry on that contract when the government tells Bob, sorry mate, we're pulling funding, if you want the Wildcats to keep going, you're going to have to buy the team from us. And he did. In the off-season, Bob did one thing that changed history. He recruited Cal Bruton. They called in the Black Pearl. Yeah, you probably wouldn't call someone that now. Yeah, it was a different time of casual racism. Cal introduced a new playing philosophy. Run, stun and have some fun. <laughs> Cal Bruton back on the court for the Wildcats, has the ball, takes Al Green on all the way. That's a great basket. Bruton was the player coach and Bob gave him budget to build a team. And did he? Pinder, Crawford, Black, Watterson and Torrance became the backbone of the Wildcats under the leadership of Captain Mike Ellis. Basketball had always been big in the US, but it took the rest of the world a while to catch up. We knew the Harlem Globetrotters. <laughs> Don't believe it. But not much more. That changed in the late 80s thanks largely to this guy. The Wildcats came into form at exactly the right time. It was a marketing dream. They got too big for Perry Lakes and moved to Perth Superdrome. Not to be confused with the Burswood Superdome. That's a lot of 80s Perth architecture. The Wildcats ended up playing in what was ground zero for 80s Perth. Yep, the entertainment centre. The club moved there after it was bought by a kind and handsome man named Kerry Stokes. By this stage, they were so big, they had their own rap song. Yeah, the Wildcats are on the prowl. Watch out if you're in the way. Listen to the hiss, listen to the growl. The Red Wildcats are on the prowl. Yeah, that was terrible. They have the grid of NWA or Beastie Boys. Can you feel the chill? We're moving for the kill. Firing up the crowd and scoring points of will. Here we come. A year after that rap campaign was released, they won their first championship, thanks in no small part to 1990s star recruit. By Ricky Grace. Amazing. That's what they called him. We had Amazing Grace. Ricky Grace, an MVP performance. And then we had an amazing fall from Grace. Tony Pinder's downfall and how the players reacted to that is what the West Australian's documentary is all about. Yeah, and we know where Pinder is now. Facing trial. And what happened to all the rest of the players? Crawford's back in the US. Bruton's a master coach at Sports Ready in Canberra. That's a not-for-profit helps young people find jobs. Alan Black's LinkedIn profile has him as head basketball coach at the Darling Range Sports College. Eric Watterson switched to a smaller ball. He's involved with golf. Grace has been part of Role Models WA, that's a sport and development program for Indigenous communities in WA. Andrew Vlahov represented Australia at four Olympic Games. He's still involved in sport, but in the hearts of West Australians, we all remember him for this. When it comes to his casual, weekend or business wear, he chooses king size menswear. I'm Ben Harvey. For more up late, click the subscribe button below.